In music production and sound design, interesting timbres and unique effects are created electronically by modelling how sound behaves mathematically. How does this work? Today we'll learn the fundamentals of sound synthesis, what waveforms are, and how we can generate them using Python. But let's start by asking, how exactly can a computer represent sound? All sound is caused by vibrations in the air. Imagine these vibrations plotted on a graph, where the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents the strength of the vibration. How high or low the wave reaches from the zero position is measured as amplitude, which corresponds to the perceived loudness of the sound. For a sound to exist, amplitude must change over time to form a waveform. The shape of this waveform determines the character of the sound we hear, its overall loudness, tone and how we perceive the pitch. In digital audio, we don't have a continuous wave. We have many snapshots or discrete samples of data. Each sample stores an amplitude at a specific point in time. When read and played back in sequence, these samples produce sound. This is similar to how a sequence of still images in rapid succession creates the illusion of smooth motion in film. With this knowledge, let's open a new Python file and try to encode a sound. Since we'll need to generate quite a lot of samples, we'll use the NumPy library. NumPy makes operations on large datasets much faster and more memory efficient. If you don't have NumPy installed yet, you can do so by running pip install NumPy. At the top of our script, we'll import NumPy as NP. We'll also need a way to play the audio data we generate. We'll use a library called SoundDevice that was designed for handling audio input and output. It can be installed with pip install sound device. We'll import it as SD. We'll start by creating white noise, which is characteristic of real world sounds, such as radio static, wind, and ocean waves. It doesn't have any identifiable pitch, but is perceived as a constant, unstructured sound. Its waveform appears as a random, jagged pattern. White noise is one of the simplest types of noise to generate because it doesn't require complex waveform calculations. It's represented as a collection of evenly distributed amplitude values that change unpredictably from one sample to the next. We'll create a function called white noise. It will take three arguments to specify the sound's duration in seconds. Its volume as an overall amplitude value between zero representing silence and one representing the maximum volume and the sample rate per second. We've set default values for a duration of 1 second, an amplitude of 0.5, and a standard sample rate of 44,100 samples per second. It will return a NumPy array, containing the samples needed to produce the sound. We'll define the total number of samples needed for the given duration and store this value in a variable called nSamples. Since sample rate defines the number of samples per second and duration defines the duration in seconds, we can calculate the total number of samples by multiplying sample rate by duration. With the default sample rate of 44,100 and a duration of one second, we'll need 44,100 samples. The number of samples must be a whole number, so we've cast this to an integer. To represent white noise digitally, we'll create our audio samples as random values using NumPy's random.uniform method. This method allows us to define the lower and upper boundaries for the values to be generated. Audio data is typically represented by values between minus 1 and 1, so we'll set the range between these two values to avoid distortion. To specify how many samples we want, we'll pass n samples as the third argument. To apply the specified amplitude, we need to scale the noise by multiplying it by amplitude. This will adjust the volume of the entire signal, effectively scaling each individual sample in the noise array. We can now return noise. We'll test this in a main function. We'll create a new white noise signal by calling our white noise function with its default values. To play the sound, we'll use the play function from the sound device library. This sends the numerical data to the computer's audio output. Finally, we'll use sd.wait to tell the program to wait until the audio finishes playing before continuing to execute any more code. When we run the program, we'll be able to hear the sound we've generated. But what if we want to create pitched sound? Sounds with recognizable pitch are characterized by waveforms that repeat in a regular periodic pattern. 
A sine wave is the simplest waveform. It's smooth and regular, like a pendulum swinging back and forth, or a gentle ripple on water. The wave oscillates in a consistent, predictable pattern, repeating itself over time. The speed or frequency of this repetition, measured in hertz, determines its pitch. For example, the concert A that a standard orchestra tunes to is 440 hertz, meaning the wave completes 440 cycles per second. When the wave oscillates at a low frequency, we hear a low pitch, but as the frequency increases, the pitch becomes higher. We'll define a new sine tone function. Similar to our white noise function, it will allow the user to specify a duration in seconds, an amplitude between 0 and 1, and the sample rate per second. Additionally, it will take a parameter to define frequency measured in hertz. We've set default values of a frequency of 440 hertz with a duration of 1 second, an amplitude of 0 0.5, and a standard sample rate of 44,100 samples per second. It will return a NumPy array containing the samples needed to represent a sine wave. As before, we'll determine how many samples are required to represent the sound as n samples by multiplying sample rate, which represents the number of samples per second, by duration, which specifies the length of the sound in seconds. Using this value, we'll create a sequence of time points, each corresponding to a sample of the sine wave. To do this, we'll use NumPy's line space function, which generates an array of evenly spaced values. Starting at zero and ending just before duration, we'll create an array with a length of n values. By setting the endpoint argument to false, we ensure the endpoint itself is excluded from the array. To represent the sine wave, we need to calculate a sine value for each time point. In trigonometry, an established sine formula can be used to describe smooth repetitive oscillations. NumPy's sine function allows us to apply this formula to numerical data. np.sine takes an input or set of values representing angles measured in radians and returns corresponding sine values. The input can be a single number, a list or an entire array of values. To generate a sine wave, we must first convert frequency in hertz to angular frequency in radians per second using the formula 2 pi times frequency. When we multiply this angular frequency by time points, we obtain the angular position or phase of the wave at each point in time. So 2 times np.pi times frequency times time points computes the sine values for every time point. The result is a numpy array containing values that oscillate between minus 1 and 1, representing the smooth movement of the sine wave over time. We'll multiply sine by amplitude to scale its values before returning it. Now let's generate and listen to the sine wave. We'll call our sine tone function with its default values to create a new sine wave signal. We'll pass this to sd.play and run the program to hear the sine tone we've generated. This is the most basic type of pitch sound, resulting from a single pure frequency. Most real world pitch sounds, however, consist of a fundamental frequency along with harmonic overtones, frequencies that are multiples of the fundamental. This occurs because vibrating objects, whether strings, air columns, or other materials, do not vibrate as a whole. They vibrate in halves, thirds, quarters, fifths, and so on. So when you play a note on an instrument such as a piano, or a clarinet, you're hearing not just a single waveform. Instead, multiple waveforms vibrate together, combining to produce the instrument's unique sound or timbre. We can similarly create more rich, complex sounds by digitally combining multiple sine waves. This technique is called additive synthesis. Let's create three new sine waves with different frequencies and amplitudes. By adding their values together at each point in time, we'll produce a new waveform that blends the characteristics of each original wave. This is based on the principle of wave superposition, which states that when two or more waves overlap, their amplitude values combine at each point in time. We can do this easily since NumPy supports element-wise operations. This means that when we sum two or more arrays, in this case our sine wave values, NumPy performs the addition at each corresponding index. We'll run the program again. What we've synthesized from combining just three sine waves is already richer and more interesting. 
To combine a greater number of sine waves, we could use a for loop or a list comprehension. We'll create a series of sine waves where each tone's frequency is determined by multiplying 200 by i and the amplitude is set to 0.7 divided by i. i will iterate over a range of values from 1 up to 30 with increments of 2. We'll then assign the sum of their values to our sine signal. From here we can experiment with different combinations of frequencies and amplitudes. By distorting the ratios between the fundamental tone and its harmonic frequencies, we can generate interesting inharmonic sounds. For example, we could offset the harmonic frequencies by adding an extra 50 Hz to each to create a more complex and unusual timbre. We could also explore beating effects, which occur when two waveforms with very close frequencies interact. Let me know your own ideas and whether you'd like to see more future videos about sound synthesis with Python. Please like and subscribe, leave your questions, feedback, thoughts and suggestions in the comment section below and thank you for watching.